Life imitates art, so as in real life, it is Black History Month in That's So Raven. They are making soul food to commemorate. Fried chicken, collard greens, candy yams, and cornbread. Corey is in the house and he wants pizza. He's really over this Black History stuff and just wants to keep it at school. His parents are disappointed and they want him to stop bending to the oppression of the man. Raven comes down and she's on her way to the mall to apply to her favorite store, Sassy's. They're at Sassy's, filling out their applications, and this girl Chelsea is useless. Super kind of ditzy and just clearly incompetent. Raven literally designs clothes, so I mean, she's probably infinitely more qualified already. They begin a series of tests, and Raven folds Chelsea on the folding test. They now have to style a customer, and Raven dresses her up like Lois from Malcolm in the Middle, and she absolutely loves it. Chelsea styles hers like Harry Styles, and everyone hates it. Corey's in the house and he's playing the original Xbox with this Mad Cats controller. I'm, I'm actually joking. I looked this up and apparently this is one of the like rare Xbox original controllers. So hopefully Corey still got that. His dad walks in wondering what happened to that paper he had to write. Corey tells him he's done and he shows him the paper. At that moment, his father and Dr. Umar are not proud. Corey is not upholding himself as a strong and proud black man. Corey's dad sits him down and tells him that when he was a kid a long ass time ago, they didn't even teach black history in school. Corey reluctantly agrees to really buckle down and finish his assignment. The next day at school, Orlando Brown is trying to achieve Dr. King's dream by hollering at every race of girl in the school. He's tricking and offering girls discounts to sassies they ain't even got the job yet by the way right at that moment chelsea walks up and she's on the phone with sassy and she actually has the job now everyone's celebrating like black aunties at graduation she then asks about raven and raven did not get the job at all just at that moment the magical black person uses her psychic powers to out Miss Sassy as a racist. That goes to show the only way we can fight racism is by banding together and using our psychic powers to figure out which races are around us. Get like a cerebro for racist. When they get home, they're all still in shock. And Orlando Brown asks if they've ever seen any people of color work at Sassy's. Orlando Brown then tells a story about a friend he had as a kid whose dad ran up and snatched him up because he was playing with Orlando Brown, all because he was black. That day changed him forever. Well, Chelsea is off to work now. Her only friends, which are all black, are confused. She then tells them that she's going to quit. Then I think she bumps her knee or something because she starts walking funny. Corey is in the house upstairs, bored as hell, trying to write this black history paper. He starts disassociating and Frederick Douglass starts talking to him through his computer screen. He then literally exits the screen and grows his body to 500 times its size. I tried to tell y'all all black people have superpowers. Frederick Douglass is disappointed at Corey for his lack of black power. Bessie Coleman walks in and Corey is bewildered at this point. Scott Joplin is downstairs playing ragtime and Corey said that shit was light. Frederick Douglass starts disintegrating objects to the prove to Corey that he better respect his power, his black power. Then they start showing him all the black people, all the inventors that they mentioned in the Proud Family episode, along with Harriet Tubman, Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, and all your other favorite black people. They even get a uh, treach from Naughty by Nature. Corey wakes up from his K-hole with a newfounded excitement for civil rights. Downstairs, Raven is watching the uh, Honorable Elijah Muhammad on TV when her parents walk in the room she tells them that she didn't get the job at sassy's and it's because she's black her dad is ready to march on washington but her mom reminds her how stupid it is that her only evidence is literally psychic powers raven wants to give up but her parents give her the encouragement to fight the power raven has an idea and she calls chelsea before she quits this light-skinned news anchor is here to help and they give Chelsea this ugly ass hat that has a camera in it, directly outside of the store that Miss Sassy's standing in. She proceeds to do a terrible job keeping Miss Sassy in frame. Raven comes in dressed like Morgan Freeman and Lean On Me, and Miss Sassy tells Chelsea to go watch him. 
Chelsea does the most, and Miss Sassy picks up the snitching task. Raven says she's the president of the company, and Miss Sassy starts copping, please. Raven asks if she hires any black people, and she says she saw a young color girl apply yesterday. Miss Sassy tries to call her right now, and Raven has to throw her phone to hide the ringing. Orlando Brown got hit with the phone and has a concussion now, and when he comes in to give it back, he also asks for an application. Right after, Miss Sassy immediately turns around to the nearest white person and starts being racist, Miss Sassy doesn't hire black people. Thanks to Miss Lightskin Reporter, we fucking got him. Miss Sassy's racist ass on the Summer Jam screen now. Racism over. Right after they get some celebratory soul food, which I mean, I definitely feel that, they also get some ice cream, which of course was invented by Sam Jackson, a black man. 